सुनिए दिस इज इंटरनेशनल सर्विस इन इंग्लिश वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट थर्टी मिनट्स ऑफ प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम एडवेंटिस्ट वर्ल्ड रेडियो इन आवर प्रोग्राम टुडे वी हैव म्यूजिक कमिंग टू यू फ्रॉम फैमिली रीयूनियन कॉन्सर्ट एंड बेंची कोशी यू विल आल्सो हियर अ हेल्थ मैसेज ऑन ऑस्टियोपोरोसिस बैटलिंग ब्रिटल बोन्स फॉर अ मेडिटेशन टुडे वी हैव अ बाइबल थीम वैल्यू ऑफ अ गुड नेम I am Anita I am Sharad and you're listening to Adventist World Radio the voice of hope Let's start our program with a song entitled Personal When you surrender it becomes personal
listening to a song by family reunion concert singers on Adventist World Radio and now over to Dr Chitra for a health message on osteoporosis battling brittle bones has ordinary everyday calcium turned out to be the gallant gladiator that can deliver fair maidens from brittle bones fractured hips and deformed spines that is what the calcium manufacturers and the dairy industry would like you to believe in reality osteoporosis is far more complicated than that what exactly is osteoporosis osteoporosis or porous bone silently and painlessly weakens the bones of around 25 million americans previously sturdy bones gradually become thinner and more fragile their interiors soft and spongy the first sign of the disease is often a fracture osteoporosis inflicts 1.3 million fractures a year hip fractures are the most disabling and life threatening spinal fractures often occur spontaneously and most are painless repeated spinal fractures can rob a person of two to 8 inches of height often producing an outward curvature called the dowager's hump now how can i tell if i've got it you can't until you fracture a bone or start shrinking in height which is very late in the disease earlier diagnosis requires special techniques and skills and is best done at reliable medical centers if you are middle aged or older and have two or more risk factors you should be tested Risk factors include sedentary lifestyle, early menopause, chronic use of corticosteroids, low estrogen, smoking, caffeine, alcohol, and a high protein diet. Lean Caucasians and Asians are more susceptible than other races because they have smaller bones. How does osteoporosis develop? Bones continue to increase in strength and thickness until around age 35. then the process gradually reverses itself and small amounts of bone are lost each year this loss accelerates in women after menopause and continues for 7 to 15 years when risk factors for osteoporosis are present bone loss occurs even faster and brittle bones may begin to show up although usually considered a disease of older women osteoporosis usually begins to appear around age 55 and 20% of victims are men. What can be done to treat this disease? Several treatment modalities are being used. Number 1, estrogen therapy slows down bone loss but increases the risk for uterine and breast cancer, thrombophlebitis and gallbladder disease. It aggravates diabetes and hypertension. Women also face the prospect of continuing menstrual periods and periodic uterine biopsies. In serious cases, however, the benefits may outweigh the risks. Number 2, vitamin D. Vitamin D enables the body to absorb calcium, but most people get more than they need and additional supplements have not proved beneficial. Number 3, fluoride. Fluoride has been used experimentally but long term results are disappointing. Number 4, calcium. Calcium has not been shown to prevent the critical tubercular bone loss that often accompanies menopause. People on high calcium diets are rarely found to have stronger bones than people on low calcium diets. There are warnings that excessive intake of calcium supplements may cause kidney stones and even promote osteoporosis by interfering with the absorption of manganese which is also vital to bone structure the world health organization recommends 500 mg of calcium a day while various health organizations all around the world recommend 800 to 1500 mg these dosages may be prudent for some however most published studies show little 
or no correlation between calcium intake and bone density. Number 5. Exercise Exercise builds strong bones and muscles. Even with plenty of calcium, the bones will not thicken and strengthen without regular weight-bearing exercise such as walking. Bones need to be pressed, pushed, pulled and twisted against gravity to hold on to their minerals. This gravity factor was well demonstrated by the early astronauts. Even though they exercised faithfully while in space, their bones showed startling osteoporotic changes on return. While nearly all types of aerobic exercise are beneficial to the body, what the bones need most is a daily shake-up for at least 30 minutes. Number 6. A low-protein diet A low-protein diet is the most promising therapy on the horizon. The metabolism of excess protein carries calcium right out of the kidneys. Studies show that calcium is always lost from bones when protein intake is too high, regardless of how many calcium-rich foods are eaten or how many calcium supplements are popped. As protein is broken down and excreted through the kidneys, Calcium is drawn from the, from the bones to neutralize the toxic effects of the sulfates and phosphates contained especially in animal protein. Eskimos in the far north consume diets extremely high in both protein, 250 to 400 milligrams per day and calcium, 1,500 to 2,500 milligrams per day. They also have the highest rate of osteoporosis of any world population, although they lead very active lives. They actually lose 50 to 100 percent or more of bone than other Americans for each decade after age 50. The Bantu tribes in Africa, on the other hand, consume an average of 47 grams of protein and less than 400 milligrams of calcium a day, predominantly from plant foods. Bantus are essentially free of osteoporosis, even though their women bear 10 or more children, making special demands on calcium reserves. In contrast, relatives of the Bantus who have migrated to the United States and adopted the American dietary lifestyle eventually experience a rate of osteoporosis comparable to the rest of the American population. How about prevention? A few common sense health practices started early in life and practiced consistently could make a great deal of difference. Exercise regularly and actively, preferably daily. Avoid calcium robbers such as cigarettes, caffeine, alcohol and phosphate-containing foods such as soda pop and red and white meats. Consistently eat no more than 50 to 60 grams of protein a day. Include a wide variety of healthful, fiber-rich plant foods. Most populations around the world average 200 to 400 milligrams of calcium a day without any evidence of osteoporosis. The fact that osteoporosis has become epidemic in the United States where the consumption of calorie-rich dairy products and calcium supplements is the highest in the world is strangely paradoxical. Most Americans eat two to three times more protein than they need, reducing protein intake to the recommended daily allowance of 50 to 60 grams per day, along with daily active exercise and a healthful diet holds promise of turning the tide in the battle against brittle bones. Thank you, Dr. Chitra, for being on our program. For more information about our broadcast, you could write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio. Post box number 17, Pune, 411-001, Maharashtra, India. Time now for another song, Christian in Name by Benji Koshi.
show them his love Can they see the Father's hands In the way that we live We Christians in name I'll be ready for the day the day comes to you from God's word on the topic value of a good name pastor frederick paul will bring this message to you proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1 says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold in modern times a family name means little more than the name that designates us as individuals who live at a certain time at a certain place such has not always been the case in biblical days great stress was placed upon the name of individuals and places the name of a person provided insight into his character and into his very life perhaps our secular life and our spiritual life would be greatly enriched if a greater emphasis were placed on the value and the significance of a good name a person's name really stands for his person his character his reputation and his integrity throughout the scripture people are warned against using the name of god carelessly to use his name is to involve him in either their conversation or their activity God does not want to be misrepresented by the careless use of his name. Likewise, a family should be widely concerned about its good name. Rich indeed are the children who receive a good name from their parents. The value of one's name should be maintained at all times. It would be helpful 
if we would recognize and respond properly to the names that have been bestowed on us as the children of God and as the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, we find at least five names or titles that are applied to us which we should bear with gratitude, dignity and honor. Firstly, we are called believers because of our faith. It is by faith that we respond to the love of God as revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Because of our faith, God justifies us, declares us righteous and gives to us a position of acceptance in His presence. We do not find acceptance in the presence of God on the basis of our keeping the law or on the basis of our moral perfection. It is by faith that we please God, and it is by faith that we achieve significant goals in the Christian life. If we ought to wear this title of believer with honor, we must exercise faith and grow to a greater faith. Secondly, we are called brothers because of our love. The new birth produces a spiritual infant who becomes a member of the family of God. We become brothers and sisters of each other in the family of God. As brothers and sisters, we should love each other sincerely and steadfastly. We should rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We should make a positive, creative contribution toward the welfare of others within the family. We are under obligation to be especially gracious and kind toward those who are of the household of faith as we see in Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. Let us respond to the brotherhood of faith with a persistent, unbreakable spirit of goodwill. Thirdly, we are called disciples because of our learning and knowledge. The disciples of our Lord were His followers. They listened to his teachings. They were enrolled in his school. They recognized their need for the new truths that he was seeking to communicate. To be a true disciple, we must sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and recognize him as heaven's infallible and authoritative teacher. We are not only to hear, but we are to heed his teachings and commandments. We can never become Christ-like in conduct until we become Christ-like in our thinking. We must let the mind of Jesus Christ become our mind. To be a disciple is to accept a discipline. The words disciple and discipline have the same root meaning. To be a disciple, we must let the way of Christ become our way. Fourthly, we are called saints because of our holiness. Some people think of saints as being unearthly heavenly creatures who have achieved a degree of perfection that has permitted them to enter heaven on the basis of their own merit. This is a non-biblical concept. To be a saint is to be a dedicated one. It means to be set apart for the purposes of God. The New Testament uses the word saint to refer to all believers, to all converts, to all of the children of God. We are not our own. We have been bought with a price. We belong to God. We need to face up to the divine ownership and recognize our Savior's Lordship. As saints, we have been called to be saintly both in spirit and in conduct. Fifthly and finally, we are called Christians because of our spirit and because of our works. Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. We should not use the term Christian as a synonym for a believer or for a disciple or even for a brother. Ideally, we would bestow the title Christian only upon those who have let the mind of Christ so take possession of them that the Spirit of Christ permeates all that they say and do. To be genuinely Christian is to be Christ-like in our attitudes in our affections, in our ambitions and actions. The Bible bestows many good names upon us. With the help of the Holy Spirit and with the guidance that we can find in the Word of God, it is possible for us to wear each of these good names with honor and dignity. 
By so doing, we bring glory to the name of our God and we obtain a good name for ourselves. Heavenly Father, as we come to you in Christ's name, we thank you so much for this precious name that brings deliverance, that breathes hope and inspiration to the depressed and dejected. I pray that the sweet name of Jesus will permeate into our soul, that we will become Christ-like in our conduct and in our character, that we will reflect Jesus morally in our day-to-day lives. May we possess the mind of Christ. In Jesus' matchless name, we humbly pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Frederick Paul, for sharing God's word. You are listening to The Voice of Hope from Pune, India. We trust that you've been enjoying our program. The Bible says, Never let today and kindness get away from you. Wear them like a necklace. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people. And you will gain a good reputation. Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. God promises to give a good name to those who show kindness, loyalty and love to their neighbors. That brings us to the end of our program. But for those of you who wish to learn more on God's word, we would love to receive your letters on Adventist World Radio. Post box number 17, Pune 411-001, Maharashtra, India. That is Adventist World Radio. Post box number 17, Pune 411-001, Maharashtra, India. I'm Anita. And I'm Sharat signing out from Adventist World Radio. Be sure to listen us again. Until then, we wish you good health and a happy home. Goodbye and God bless you.